A new study shows that fibromyalgia might actually be an immune system condition and not something that takes place in the brain. And I think that's really interesting. This condition affects a lot of people around the world, and it's not really well understood yet. And it's kind of like seen by some people as like hysteria or something like that was kind of seen before. Now we don't really talk about that. We know that people have different mental conditions and issues. And in this case with fibromyalgia, I think people who suffer from it sometimes are very frustrated that other people don't really like necessarily believe that they have something or there's no like specific for sure diagnosis and it can be frustrating on that level. And of course, it's also debilitating and painful when you have this. And so if we can learn more about what fibromyalgia actually is and diagnose people properly, treat the fibromyalgia so that it doesn't cause so many problems and maybe even cure it, I'm not sure if that's possible, that would be great because a lot of people suffer from it and I know people personally who have it and I really want them to feel better and experience life in a different way. So hopefully we can figure out a way for that to happen and hopefully that stigma can start to go away as well because again so many people suffer from it so this article is really interesting it's from the guardian it says new research challenges widely held view of the condition of fibromyalgia and could pave way for better treatment fibromyalgia a poorly understood condition that causes widespread pain throughout the body and extreme tiredness may be caused by an autoimmune response that increases the activity of pain sensing nerves throughout the body the findings, published in the Journal of Clinical Investigation, challenge the widely held view that the condition originates in the brain and could pave the way for more effective treatments for the millions of people affected. Yeah, hopefully. They could also have implications for patients suffering from myalgic encephalomyelitis chronic fatigue syndrome and long COVID. These different syndromes are symptomatically very similar, so I think it could be relevant to both of those conditions as well, said Dr. David Anderson from the Institute of Psychiatry, Psychology, and Neuroscience at King's College, London, which is where the new study took place. Fibromyalgia affects at least 1 in 40 people worldwide, although some estimates suggest nearly 1 in 20 people may be affected to some degree. It's characterized by widespread pain and crippling fatigue, often referred to as fibrofog, and usually develops between the ages of 25 and 55, although children can also get it. Similar to many other autoimmune conditions, the vast majority of those affected, about 80%, are women. So this tends to affect women more than men, but men get it too. Current treatment tends to focus on gentle aerobic exercise, as well as drug and psychological therapies designed to manage pain. However, these have proven ineffective in most patients and have left behind an enormous unmet clinical need. Yeah, the widespread paradigm at the moment is that this is a disease that emanates from the brain, and I think our findings suggest that that's not the case, he said. The development of new therapies has also been hampered by a limited scientific understanding of what causes the condition in the first place, but this could change with the discovery that the immune system is involved. That's the exciting thing about this study. It may be an autoimmune condition. And here's how they did it. Anderson and his colleagues harvested blood from 44 people with fibromyalgia and injected purified antibodies from each of them into different mice. The mice rapidly became more sensitive to pressure and cold and displayed reduced grip strength in their paws. Animals injected with antibodies from healthy people were unaffected. So the antibodies from people with fibromyalgia affected these mice and made them more sensitive to pressure and cold and reduced their grip strength, whereas antibodies from people without fibromyalgia didn't have any effect on the mice. That's very, very interesting. And apparently antibodies from people with fibromyalgia living in two different countries, the UK and Sweden, were both used and they gave similar results, which adds strength to the findings, of course. The mice recovered once the antibodies had been cleared from their systems. That's another big key about this, which took a few weeks. This suggests that therapies such as plasma exchange, which are designed to reduce antibody levels and are available for other autoimmune disorders, such as myasthenia gravis, may be effective in fibromyalgia patients. Establishing that fibromyalgia is an autoimmune disorder will transform how we view the condition and should pave the way for more effective treatments for the millions of people affected, Anderson said. Our work has uncovered a whole new area of therapeutic options and should give real hope to fibromyalgia patients. 
The next step will be to identify what factors the symptom-inducing antibodies bind to, said Svensson. This will help us not only in terms of developing novel treatment strategies for fibromyalgia, but also of blood-based tests for diagnosis, which are missing today. So that's the other piece of this. It's actually diagnosing fibromyalgia more accurately. Anderson said he also hoped to conduct similar experiments using antibodies harvested from people with MECFS and long COVID. So this is kind of a new horizon for people with fibromyalgia in terms of thinking of it as an autoimmune disorder. And if that's the case, then we can fight it with these plasma treatments and possibly other treatments as well that have to do with antibodies. And so I think this is really interesting and I'm looking forward to seeing where this line of research goes and hopefully it provides hope to a lot of people who have fibromyalgia and maybe in the future people won't suffer from it so much or maybe we can get rid of it completely. So this is very hopeful and that's why I wanted to share it with you today. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you appreciate the hopeful nature of this research. And if you want to join me for another topic that I think is either interesting or useful, I post a new video every single day at 7 a.m. Eastern time. So you can join me for another topic that I think is fascinating tomorrow if you want. And either way, whether you decide to keep hanging out with me and subscribe to my channel or not, I hope you have an excellent rest of your day and I will talk to you later.